Today I have a small tip for you about how to get a view size in SwiftUI, something that I've been struggling with many times. So it turns out that the best way to get the view size is to put the geometry reader with a clear color inside a view's background. This way the geometry reader will not affect your view. I have a short demo on how you can use it and take advantage of the geometry reader. Let's get started. Okay, so we have a very simple app here. There is a scroll view with a lot of text, as you can see, and the button down below. And I want to have this uh, as a floating button. So the issue here, which we'll be solving using the geometry reader, is that right now, as you can see, our button is on the text. So we need additional padding here. We could just like add some, you know, <laughs> some number and try to like solve this uh, it this way. So if someone will use dynamic type, it will fail. As you can see, it is not working because the text does not have like the fixed size. So the idea is that using the geometry reader, we can get the height of this button and put it inside here for this bottom padding. So each time the height of the button will change, we can just like adjust the padding on the bottom and the text will be still readable and the button will be visible. So let's add the geometry reader. So the geometry reader is just a view that will try to fill up the whole available space. And this is something that you need to be aware and remember as I did not. And this uh, was a source of many issues for me. Inside it, you will have a geometry prox instance, this one which gives you access to its container size and coordinate space. Let's go here and as you can see, it will have the CG size, which is the size of the container view. So right now when we will try to put the button inside the uh, geometry reader, as you can see, the button is up here. It just like, so it basically went from the bottom position to the top. So yeah, what's happened here? Uh, we can add the border to be able to see how big the geometry there is. And as you can see, this is the whole space that geometry there took because it will try to fill up the whole available space. So this is an issue and I uh, many times like fail trying to like incorporate the geometry there the wrong way. So the best way to use the geometry reader is to put it inside the background or maybe the overlay because background and overlay, it will be like the size of the view that you would like to use. So in this case, inside the button. So we can just get rid of this. Yeah, we can also get rid of the whole geometry reader at this point. And for the background, let's create background and put here the geometry reader. So inside the geometry reader, we need to add some kind of view. So usually uh, the best way is to just like put a color. You can put a clear color, so it will just fill up the whole space, the available space of the button. If you will put additional color, you can see the background here. So the geometry reader filled up the whole space that's available for this button. So let's add the clear color. And right now inside the, so inside the geo variable, inside the size, we can have a height of this view. So let's print this and see what is the height. To do this, let's uh, open this inside the simulator. So the app has been loaded and as you can see, this is our height. So right now we can create a state variable and put this height inside the state variable. So we have the button height variable and right now for the color on appear, we can put the value of this geometry reader height inside this variable. Let's clear this up. So right now when the view will be created inside this geometry reader, we will read the size of this button. And when the color will be created for the on appear, we will put this height inside this button height. So also we need to use it. So let's add this button height to our padding. 
and let's resume this. So right now the, the padding is our button height with additional padding because we need to add this one because we have this edge ignoring safe area because we'd like to scroll this below the safe area. Okay, so right now we have a working button, but it still will fail when we will change the dynamic type. And the reason why is that when we will change the dynamic type and we will restart the app or the app will start for the first time, it will all work because we will provide the button height and this works. But when you, for example, change dynamic type when the app is running or if like anything inside the view will change and you would like to apply this change like on the fly, it will not work because this one, it only assign the height of the button for the on appear, so it will not work. So let's run this inside the simulator and I will show you what's going on here. So when you will try to change the dynamic type when the app is still running, you will see that it is not working as expected. If we would do this inside the SwiftUI preview, it will work because SwiftUI preview will just like reload the whole view when we will change the dynamic type, so it will work. So what can we do with this one? There is this protocol preference key, a name value produced by a view, which is just a way of passing the information around in SwiftUI. This way we can create a struct that conforms to this protocol, and when the value will change, we can read it and pass this to the button height. So because this is a protocol, we need to create our struct. It needs to conform to this preference key. And yeah, as you can see, the preference key, we can go and check the documentation. It has this default value. We need to uh, set the associate type and using the reduce, it will modify the values on the fly. And the easiest way is just to like use Xcode to, to fix this. We can provide the CG size because our value here is the CG size and then continue. And we need to pass the default value, which is basically a zero. And for the reduce, we don't need to add anything. It will be handled by the, by the system itself. And as I can see, the in out parameter is the CG size and we are getting back the CG size. And we actually don't need to have this type alias. It will work as expected without it. Let's clean this up. So right now we can use it here on our color and let's add this preference. And for the key, we need to use our view preference key as a type. So we need to pass the self. And for the value, we just need to read the size of this geo proxy. So each time our button height will change, we will read this inside the geometry reader. The value will change and we will pass it to our preference key. And this way we can just read this in different place. And for example, in this case, pass to our button height variable. To do this, you need to call this one on preference change and we need to pass the, the key. So view preference key and we have the new size. We can print this and check how this works. Let's build this. Let's open our simulator and let's change the dynamic type. And also we need to open the console. As you can see, the first one, the initial value is here when we will change the dynamic type and start you know, changing this each time it will print the new value. As you can see, the height is 200 right now. So yeah, let's use this. Let's set our button height to the new size, the new height. And let's build this. So right now, our button, button looks good. We change the dynamic type, scroll down. And as you can see, it works as expected. Each time we are changing this dynamic type, the value of the, the button height is being updated. So our text, the padding is in the right place. Okay, so it works as expected. And because we can use this in many different places, and this is like <laughs> probably something that you will be using in many places, we can create an extension for this. So yeah, let's create an extension on the, on the view. 
So yeah, let's move the, the background here. So we will return the some view. Let's do this. So let's add on preference change. We could actually also move this one, uh, but we need to change this a little bit. So we have this on preference change, uh, but we need to add the perform here. And as you can see, the perform needs to expect this closure. So we need to add additional closure, the one that we will be called each time this will change. So we basically need to have the CG size and void. And this one needs to be escaping. So let's put this one here and we don't need this. So each time here, the preference change will be called on this type. We are just performing this closure. So we are passing the CG size. So right now we can just remove this one and replace this with our new extension, the get size. So yeah, we have the size, we can just apply this as we did before, so the size and the height. And yeah, let's run this and see if this still works. Yeah, the same. So if you will be using this in many places, and you probably will be, you can just use this new extension. I bet that now getting a view size will be a little easier for you. That's all what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.